become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding hi everybody golden era bookworm here and today i thought i would talk about carl murky a german strongman who had the ability of performing 500 pound squats daily amongst other incredible feats of strength for his daily performances back in the bronze era of bodybuilding and also had an early influence in the u.s weightlifting and is therefore considered a true pioneer of the iron game I came across this incredible athlete in the latest issue of Iron Man magazine, which I am now distributing as a scanned e-magazine thanks to my collaboration with John Ballack. This is the kind of information we can learn about in these historic magazines, and I'm going to be sharing an article from each of these e-magazines with you so you can understand the quality of these publications that were produced so many years ago. Now, on to Carl Murky. Enjoy. Karl Murky was born in Cologne, Germany in 1889, although others say he was born in 1893, and as a boy was overweight and so did not do so well in the school gymnastics, but he was very, very powerful. He began training at the age of 14, making his own barbells with lead pipes and disc shaped train bumpers from railroad yards. He trained in both bodybuilding and weightlifting, and every week he would attempt new lifting records. At the time, bodybuilding was married with odd lifting, which is the old style of weightlifting. At 16 years of age, Murky won the City of Cologne Championship, and at 17 years of age, captured two other titles. Such was the skill and strength of the young prodigy. Further, in 1920, he won the Olympic Games in Vienna against Henry Steinborn, who is seen in this photo on the right alongside Karl Murky. You can actually see the white arrow on Karl Murky, and Steinborn is at his left. So you can really appreciate Steinborn's natural physique. The development of his shoulders and arms are just amazing. Real natties back then. It is said that Karl had a real impact on Steinborn, who later revolutionized the Iron Game by promoting, of course, the barbell squat, which later helped give rise to the massive physiques of both the silver and golden era of bodybuilding. After winning the Olympics, Karl decided to move to the United States to join the Strongman Axe, but it was actually a very disappointing time for him. His acts, though, were truly incredible at the time, although they were not appreciated, unfortunately, by the public. He was able, for example, to push one end of a fire engine with his feet high enough so that the wheels could spin, as shown in this incredible photo here. He eventually secured an act, which required him to perform several strength feats daily. And man, were these strength feats impressive. These included pressing 250 pounds for 10 repetitions daily, squatting 500 pounds daily, pressing a Model T Ford with his feet daily, and doing a back lift with 10 men daily. All of these and many more performances. I believe there were 19 performances in total he had to do every single day. The man was a powerhouse. As you can imagine, Carl Murky was a very strong man and listed are his best recorded strength feats. He could perform a two-arm strict military press with 250 pounds. That's heels together and back completely straight. The two-arm continental press for 350 pounds. The two-hand jerk with 386 pounds. He could perform a squat of 650 pounds and a deadlift of 650 pounds. And get this, he could perform a one-arm snatch with 160 pounds with only his pinky finger wrapped around the dumbbell. Can you imagine? The man was incredible. And to top that all off, here is a great photo of Carl jerking 375 pounds. I mean, that's an incredible weight for such a small man. Uh, yeah, I mean, he wasn't necessarily the biggest or the tallest man, but he was just built for lifting, wasn't he? Listed here are Carl Murky's measurements. And as I said, he was very short, but quite powerful thanks to his weight. 
He was uh, only five foot, two inches tall, weighed almost 250 pounds, weighed 245 pounds at his peak. His neck was 19 inches. He had arms of 18 and a half inches, a chest of 48 inches, thighs of 33 inches, and calves of 19 and a half inches. I'm pretty sure he also had a fairly large waist, but I couldn't find an actual measurement for his waist. After getting married with one of the showgirls, his wife actually left him, and then he was flat broke and returned to Germany. He later passed away in December 1946. So I do hope you have enjoyed this look at this relatively unknown strongman from Germany, Karl Merki, who served as a real pioneer of the Iron Game. Here he is pictured with George F. Jowett, Sigmund Klein, and Mark Berry. Again, this particular article can be found in the latest issue of Iron Man magazine, Volume 5, Issue 2, which is out now on my website, so go check it out. The next issue will be out in March, and I will give more details soon, as well as sharing an article from this great issue. If you have enjoyed this video, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so, and leave me your comments if you wish to support the channel. You can do so via PayPal or becoming a patron, or visiting my respective websites for ebooks, emags, autograph photos, and merchandise. Thanks for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. To support your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code bookworm12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.